Okay guys, thanks for coming today. We're going to be looking at peer observations and how you as the veteran teacher are going to be going into our beginning teachers classrooms to evaluate them as the peer observer. I'm going to give each of you one of these handouts. You should be very familiar with this handout, just a quick overview of what you're going to see and hear that's going to be of most importance for you going into the classroom starts on page six. It's listing the standards that our teachers are using in the classrooms that you are being observed with as well. So I know that you're already all very, very familiar with these. Our beginning teachers are not. So do take a moment and before you go in to observe and be very, very familiar with those because those are going to be the ones that you're going to be looking for as you observe our beginning teachers. Um, turning to tape, page 12 is an overview of the framework for our 21st century learning and all of the components that we are looking for in building our, our new teachers and supporting them in the classroom. What we're going to be looking at specifically today in your role is observing that beginning teacher and we're going to be looking specifically on page 21. This is the observation tool that you guys are being observed on. It's the same tool that our beginning teachers are used um, when they are observed by Mr. Webb, by Mr. Kitley, by their mentors, etc. You also are very, very, very familiar with this tool, but you might not be familiar with it as it comes in rela related to how you use it to observe someone else. And that, you know, you're on the other side of the table, so to speak, with this um, um, tool and how you're going to be using it. So I want to first go through the procedure of how you're going to find the observation tool for the teachers. We're going to go and look at this in a little bit more detail. Then we'll go into True North Logic and look at that as a live document so that you can see exactly what you're going to be looking at and being able to follow along with your handout. So you're all very familiar with this screen with um, NCA Cloud. You would click on True North Logic, the icon that you go to automatically for your observations and where you put in your um, PEPs, where your observation tools are held, etc. Then you will click on staff evaluations. Again, we're going to look at this specifically on the live document, but this handout will be, the PowerPoint will be given to you as a resource to go back and look in um, for referring as well. You'll be going in under peer observation, and then you're going to see a listing of all of the things that you are required to do to complete for this peer observation. You will notice that the pre-observation conference, it says, is optional. While it is an optional component, I highly, highly recommend that you make it not optional. That you take time to meet with this beginning teacher, have a little bit of a conversation with them, so that you can really connect and find out what they need from you in the classroom. Ask them, hey, I'm coming in to watch. What are some of the things that I need to be looking for? Do I look for classroom management skills? Do I look for questioning techniques? What specifically does that beginning teacher feel like they are struggling with? Then you will complete the formal observation. A conference is mandated where you see stars are mandated things. You will have this post-observation conference where the teacher acknowledges it. And then these, uh, these components here, the over, uh, acknowledgement override, a written response, written ex um, acknowledgement, again, those are optional. And that, again, you've seen that in your observations. And then the last thing is where you then will have to go in as the observer and actually lock this so that it gets connected to the peer observation, um, to the teachers, overall observation techniques. This is the step that everybody seems to forget. Everybody gets all this done beautifully, and then at the end you go, oh, you forgot to lock it, because that's not something you're familiar with on your side. So pretend you're the administrator, you're the one coming into the classroom to make that 
um, the official observation. Again, a post a checklist for you for you to refer to and how this is going to go. So looking at this pre-observation conference option, some of the things that you should use this time to do. This is not a place where you're asking um, like super, super detailed questions, but as I mentioned already, this is an opportunity for you to talk with that teacher about those special circumstances. Do, is this an inclusion class? Are the students, um, are there special needs that you need to be aware of? Are there situations where this a teacher coming in to observe needs to be aware of the dynamics in the classroom? Um, what are the objectives of the lesson? It's very helpful for you as the observer to come in knowing ahead of time what the objective is. Now you're all going to be in areas that are not familiar to you. You're not, math teachers are not going into math teacher classrooms, social studies not into social studies, and that's by design. Uh, math people, I've got, I matched you with science, science with math, that kind of interaction, and then English and social studies are, are back and forth with that connection. And really, you're familiar with your own content, and this observation is not about content. What this observation is designed to do is to give true feedback to that first year teacher who is maybe struggling or maybe has it all on, on top of things and they just need a little bit of you know the expertise coming in from you guys which is exactly what you are. So knowing what the objectives are for the lesson, your goal isn't really to go, oh my goodness, you've got that wrong or you're teaching that all wrong, but looking at the whole classroom, the whole interaction with that teacher and exactly what's happening in there. You also want to make sure you know where the lesson fits into the overall curriculum. So is this teacher creating some dog and pony show, if you will, just because you're coming in there, or is this truly meeting the standards, focusing in on what needs to be um, addressed, and the, the beginning teacher recognizes that and can verbalize that to you. Um, again, this might be a question time for you to ask, hey, what are, are there specific students that you would like for me to observe or that you have concerns about saying with motivational techniques, whatever that might be. Additionally, that last piece, is there anything else that you would like for me to take a peek at while I am here? So that's that pre-observation. Again, while it is optional in terms of what the state requires, I would highly recommend that for you it is not optional. I know that this is an awkward time in a sense because you don't know these beginning teachers. They're out of your content, they may be in a totally different building, and those kind of interactions are difficult for us sometimes when we don't know this other person, but I'm, I'm leaving it to you to make that connection. I will send out an initial email that connects the two of you together to let the beginning teacher know that you are their observer and then from there you guys need to connect and make that happen. So keep in, in mind those things. Um, once we get to the actual observation piece, um, you're going to go into the classroom and observe. I would recommend that you take this tool with you when you go, it's a paper copy, so that as you are in the classroom, you've got what you're looking for in front of you. You can take anecdotal notes if you like, if that helps you, whatever you're comfortable with. There's no set and hard, fast rule on making that um, as the piece of, of contention in here. We'll look at this in a little bit. So once you get into the program to enter your observation, this is where things kind of get a little um, sticky and you guys are, are sometimes unfamiliar with this process. So there's a little start new and you're gonna have to do that to make these little areas become active, if you will. So you're gonna open the portal, start a new observation, and then you're gonna be filling in what you see. One of the things that we have to pay attention to is if it says it is not looked for, then you are not gonna do anything with that standard because you 
didn't see what was happening in that particular place. And this instrument here shows you where you need to check that and where you don't. So not looked for is very different than not demonstrated. Not demonstrated means that you were looking for it and the teacher didn't do, didn't do it. You couldn't find it. This is not a gotcha moment. This is a learning piece and being supposed to be very supportive. So when we're going into these um, classrooms, keep that in mind that the, we need this to be supportive yet also very um, factual. We, we need to be real with, with our teachers here. Um, just kind of an overview to remember that when you're clicking, you don't have to, to select this one and this one to move to the next level. Perhaps when you're in the classroom and you've observed it, you see, understands how they contributed students graduate from high school and provides evidence of data. And maybe as a beginning teacher, they're already up here and creating a classroom culture that empowers students to collaborate. But you don't have to check this, 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 and that one to, to say this right here. On the flip of that, you don't want to just check one and assume all of these others are taking place. That seems to be a very um, common mistake that a lot of our peer observers do throughout the process. So as I mentioned in this booklet, there's places here that say what you need to be looking for and what you don't. You'll see a little check mark. So if you look on page 21, you'll see that there's a little check mark in that far left corner or um, column that says you need to be looking for these things. But if you look at the very next little bar of group in subsection B, you'll see there's not a check mark there. So what are you going to do with that one? You, you are not going to deal with that because you can't see that in the classroom. So only the places where you see the check mark, again, looking on page 22. There are no check marks. So on all of those, you're going to actually, if I go back here, you would click not looked for in that situation. You'll also see that it says in the online version that it's observable. If it's observable, you need to observe it. You need to try and find a way to um, assess how that's happening in that uh, teacher's classroom. So again, observable. It will tell you that everything in this standard was observable versus not looked for versus and not demonstrated. So uh, again, going back to your handout here, kind of matching these up, you'll see there isn't a check mark and that was at the um, bottom of page 21. That's where this is coming from. So we're going to just say, not look for, not demonstrate, keep on going. Just keep on going. Don't, don't stress over, I didn't see these things in that classroom. Are there any questions so far? You guys are awesome. I know this is a lot to um, take in at one time, but we will, we will get there. So you completed the formal observation. You have filled it out in the system. You have shared it with the peer. Um, with the other teacher. So now it's time for a post-observation conference. So looking at that post-observation conference, what are some great questions that you should be looking at to make this happen? It should be twofold. This is a time for the teacher to brag about what they felt went really well in the lesson. Ask them that. Hey, what'd you think went really, really good? Because you know, teachers have worked really hard. These new teachers are they're oftentimes struggling and they want to do a great job. But they are wanting to brag about, oh my gosh, I worked really hard on this and it went really well. Now you may agree or not agree, but let's let them have a chance to, to do what's happening there. Um, it's a time for the teacher to address red flags, classroom managements, transitions, et cetera, and so forth. And hopefully, that beginning teacher is, is seeing, you know, this worked really well, but mm, this wasn't so good. So lead them in those conversations. Don't automatically go, well, I just thought your uh, transitions were just terrible, and how dare you, blah, 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 blah. 
don't be condescending. Be positive and, and push that into a, a situation where they feel comfortable sharing the things that they're struggling with. It is not an inquisition. It is not a time for you to come in and just slam them and hammer them and ask them 29 gazillion questions about their pedagogy and X, Y, and Z and why and how dare they not be able to answer that. That's not what this is designed for. We are, we are supporting our teachers, not putting them down. And again, as I mentioned previously, it's not a gotcha moment. This is not a time where we're gonna say, I gotcha, so let's see what we can do and, and make that teacher feel terrible. Some of our teachers are struggling. This is a time of year where, you know, the holidays are coming on and, and yeah, we're at the end of the first quarter and they might be feeling a little accomplished, but they are mostly probably feeling very overwhelmed. They need a break and, and, and uh, winter break can't get here fast enough for them or me further as far as I'm concerned. So just kind of keep that in mind as you watch through that. And